Welcome to Jamie TV, thank you very much for tuning in. I've been sending some MIDI out of Logic Pro for iPad to some hardware synths and recording the audio back into Logic Pro for iPad. We've really got to shorten that name. And I found all this terribly exciting, so I thought I'll share with you how I did it and some of my findings because it might be helpful to one or two people out there. But my advice would be, if you haven't done anything like this before in Logic Pro for iPad, then test your connections, your MIDI out and your audio in, make sure everything's working with some software that you do know. I tested all this with AUM. I'm just gonna quickly show you how I did that. If you don't need this information, we're time coded here, so just skip along to the next bit. So here are the two synths. IK Multimedia's Uno synth and Donna's B1. Both of them are connected to my iPad via USB into my powered hub here. You'll see there are three connections in my hub. The third one is my iRig Pro Duo interface. The hub, which is shit by the way, don't buy one of these, goes into this third party cheapest chips dongle, which goes into my iPad. This is so that I can constantly charge the iPad with this white cable here. The USB cables are being used to send the MIDI to the synths. The Uno synth has been set to receive MIDI on MIDI channel one and the B1 on channel two. That's done on the synths themselves. Now the B1 has its own power, so it's only using USB to receive MIDI, but the Uno synth draws power from the hub via the USB and receives the MIDI data that way. Now, if I plug the audio output from the Uno synth straight into my iRig Pro Duo interface, I get an unbearable ground hum. But by routing it to this DI, which then comes into the Pro Duo channel one, it eliminates that. The audio from the B1 is coming into the second channel of the Pro Duo interface, here. Now, if we look at AUM, on this MIDI channel here, I have Rosetta particles generating random notes on MIDI channel one. And if I click the burger icon beside it here, MIDI outputs, we have Uno synth selected down at the bottom. And here, Rosetta baseline is set to MIDI output two. Burger icon, MIDI output, Donna B1. If I click up here, you can see all my routing very clearly. The third connection being Cordboard, sending MIDI just inside of AUM to Buttersynth. This is the audio in from the iRig Pro Duo channel one. So that's the Uno synth. And of course, this is channel two of the interface where we have the audio from the B1 coming in. But I'm not restricted to using just USB for MIDI here. The iRig Pro Duo also handles MIDI in and out, so I wanted to test that too, so I wired it all up with MIDI cables. All that involves is taking a MIDI cable from the back of the interface, into the Uno synth, out of the Uno synth, into the B1, out of the B1, back to the interface. And then, in AUM, all we need to do is visit both particles and baseline, and for the MIDI output, we select the iRig Pro Duo instead of the devices themselves. My apologies if all of that seems a little extraneous, but if you're experimenting with this in Logic and it's not working, how do you know whether the problem is definitely something you're doing wrong in the door if you haven't tested all your connections? Anyway, the first thing we need here is a MIDI channel to send MIDI to the Uno synth. So we'll go to this plus icon and add a MIDI channel. And we're going to need some MIDI. So here's some MIDI I made earlier. We'll drag that to here. Now we click down here and we go to add instrument and from utility, we select external instrument. Let's set this playing. In MIDI destination here, because I have the Uno synth attached via USB, I can see it in the drop down list. You can also see iRig Pro Duo. If I was just using MIDI cables instead of USB, I would select that. So let's choose Uno synth. 
and it's receiving MIDI on MIDI channel 1. So we want to send it on channel 1 from here. Now the really cool thing about this external instrument plugin is if I go to audio input, we can hear the audio that's coming out of the Uno synth and into the first channel of my interface. And we can control the volume of it here. So even though this is a MIDI channel, we're monitoring real audio here. Outrageous. But I want to record this audio in, so I'm going to just take this volume back here, go to the plus sign and add an audio track, which we want to be mono because the Uno synth is mono and it's coming into input one of my interface. Now, if I arm the input channel and press record, there I'm recording the Uno synth into Logic Pro for iPad. Now a quick look at my setup for the B1. Donna B1 selected from the drop down list, MIDI channel 2. The audio input is set up, but the volume pulled down. And this audio track is receiving audio from my interface's second channel and is ready to record. So that's utterly awesome, right? And yet, when I first started looking at Logic Pro for iPad, I didn't even think it could do this. There's a lot of stuff with this door that's kind of under the hood, not immediately apparent. To draw my own personal conclusion about this process I've been doing in this video, I think that in more or less any other door, it's more intuitive and user-friendly sending MIDI out and recording audio back in. And yet, now that I've got my head around it in Logic Pro for iPad, I love it. It offers more functionality than those other doors. I'm really digging it. Comment below the video and tell me what you thought to this process. I hope this video was useful to at least one or two people out there. And if it was, feel free to comment below the video and tell me how utterly awesome I am. If you'd like to help out the channel in any way, all the links are down below the video where you can send me thousands of pounds. Or alternatively, all my contact info is down there. So if you'd like to send me some hate mail, knock yourself out. Until my next video, make lots of music, try not to be a shithead, and don't pissy pants about. See you later.